Hi, my name is Brooks Lybrin, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can combine Remix and Tailwind CSS to do some extreme style sheet size optimizations. To get started, let's start this little demo app that I have. I'll run npm run dev, and on the left hand side I'll go to localhost 3000. So as you can see, this demo app is just a bunch of random pages with random components. None of them really do much of anything, but basically I wanted to apply a bunch of Tailwind classes so we had a semi-large application. The way I built this is I used Tailwind UI, which is a set of components and styles and different pages that the Tailwind folks have made. This is actually a paid service, but they have a bunch of free options. So I took all those free options and created this demo app out of that. So there's a couple things that we need to talk about in Remix before we can talk about how we're going to optimize these style sheets. The first thing is the idea of nested layouts. If you're unfamiliar, everything in Remix basically is derived from the URL and from the path that you're on. So application slash description list, if we focus on this application part, let's go ahead and close this and open application.tsx. So basically, that's what's rendering this sidebar. And this outlet is whatever changes in this right-hand side. So if I go to dropdowns, the application part stayed the sound same, the dropdowns changed, and this inner part changed. Going back to description list, login and registration, pagination, you can see the right-hand side is always changing, whereas the left-hand side is staying the same. That's because the application part of that in this application.tsx is what controls that in the nested layout. And whatever is rendered in the outlet is rendered in the uh, different pages. So if I go to description list.tsx, you can see that's actually all the markdown, or sorry, markup, uh, and all of the class names that create this application information in the right-hand side. Besides just giving you nested layouts, nested routes and remix also allow you to apply styles exactly where you want them to be. To show what I mean by this, I'm going to create a style sheet in the styles folder that I have. We'll call it application.css. This could be called whatever you want, but I just want to call it application because that's where I'm going to end up putting it. We'll create a class name called Brooks, and we'll apply a background color of blue just so we can really see when it's applied. In here, I'll go ahead and add Brooks to my list of class names. I'm going to go ahead and refresh just to make sure nothing is actually working or updating on the left-hand side. That's because we need to actually import this style sheet and apply it. So here I'm going to export something called links. And we'll go ahead and take a links function, which comes, it's just a type that's coming from Remix basically, and this helps us have some hints as to what we're supposed to provide here. And again, this is a function, so we need to return something. And what we're going to return is an array of objects with rel style sheet, and then href. So what should we put here? Well, if you've read the documentation of Remix or seen any Remix apps, you'll probably see that you need to import, we'll call it application styles from styles slash application.css. And it's not showing up, which is OK. Probably just something going on with the dev server. And if I add it to the href, we should see on the left-hand side, after I refresh, everything will be blue. Not very pretty, of course, but this is really cool because we can basically add this style sheet to this specific application.tsx. If I go to marketing, we're not going to see it. But in all the different application pages, we do see this style sheet. And in fact, if I open up the network tab and give this a refresh again, we'll see that there's inner.css. That's just the font. Uh, but then we see tailwind.css and then application. And all this is just basically a way of fingerprinting these different CSS files. And it's only 369 bytes because all it is is, again, just dot brooks with background color blue. But that's exactly what it is. We can see it right here. It applied that directly to the application. And what's cool is if I go to marketing and I give this a refresh, we won't see that application CSS file. We'll only see this Tailwind one, which is the big global one. So that's another really cool thing you can do with nested layouts, or rather nested routes. You can do nested layouts, but you can also do nested styling. So the way that Tailwind works specifically, if you're unfamiliar, is basically Tailwind is a set of utility uh, atomic class names and styles. I'll go ahead and close this and go back to application. And if you look in the root.tsx file that we have, the way that we apply it is there's that inner.css. Again, that's just you know font names and stuff. Oh, I want to get rid of that blue, first of all. So if I go to application, I can just remove all this again. Remove, remove, remove. And we should be back to a little bit of a prettier style. There we go. So going back to root.tsx, what we can see is that we add this Tailwind style sheet URL 
from styles.tailwind.css. And that's basically all the styles we're ever going to need. So when I run tail or when I run the dev environment, Tailwind goes ahead and it parses through my entire application code and it looks for every single class name that I have, every single Tailwind style class name, H full, men, H full, um, BG gray 800, all of them. And basically it says, okay, that is all the styles you'll ever need. So I'm going to create that list of styles and create it as one style sheet. So what does this mean in an actual application code? Well, let's stop the dev server. Let's run npm run build. I'll move my face. And so that runs Tailwind with an output and it went ahead and minified the styles. So I'm gonna run npm start and this will start kind of a more production version of the Remix app. I'll open up my uh, console here. And again, I'm on network. And so let's give this a refresh. We'll empty, we'll empty and do a refresh. Okay, now we can see that we have this Tailwind CSS files. Um, and it is in fact 7.1 kilobytes large. So that's basically all the Tailwind styles that we'll need is 7.1 kilobytes, which is pretty small and, and really great. Uh, we really probably don't need much more than that. But basically what I wanted to do is see if we could combine this idea of nested layouts, uh, nested style sheets being applied to only where they're needed and Tailwind to optimize things even more fully. So I'll show what I mean by visiting a state chart first. If you're unfamiliar with state charts, don't worry at all. This is basically just a flow diagram to represent an idea. That's the only reason I want to use this. Uh, it's created by Stately, which is a company that created XState and works on state charts and all sorts of things if you want to look them up later. But basically, I just wanted to use a state chart to show the idea before I actually show how it works. I figured that might conceptually help a little bit. So basically, I've got this idea called purge per route. I want to purge the CSS, get only the Tailwind CSS class names that I need per every single route. So how would I do that? Basically, uh, I start, of course, and then I want to prepare my style sheets, basically. So I just need to dump all the old styles. I don't want there to be any clashing or anything left over or cached. Uh, that would be kind of problematic. So I just dump everything. Then I want to create the styles. So now I'm in this, this state called generating ASTs. If you're unfamiliar, uh, an AST is just an abstract syntax tree. It's a way to take code and basically create uh, an abstraction of it. Uh, it's something that's parsable, something where we can look up nodes and uh, basically categorize everything and classify things. It's way beyond my skill and ability. I used a library called CSS tree to actually do this. So we're going to create ASTs for each and every route that we have, ASTs of the class name specifically. So in here, we need to actually run Tailwind CSS for every single individual route. Typically, you run Tailwind over your entire application, but I no longer want to do that. I want to, want to run it for every route. So application.tsx, description, list, um, even the root and all the components will be Tailwind styles. So I'll create a Tailwind set of Tailwind class names for each and every route. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an AST of each of those so that we can actually parse them and read class names and all sorts of things. So I create that and I generate the root ones. Here I actually go ahead and I export the root CSS because we don't need to do any purging on root. It's the root. So it's got all the styles that it needs. And again, uh, I kind of glossed over this, but basically root also is going to contain any extra components that I have, which we'll see later. Then I go into this, uh, or rather I send this purge styles um, action. And this is only if the ASTs are ready, of course. This is really just a promise uh, dot all wait. And so if they're ready, I go to generate route style sheets. And I am going to generate the route styles for every single route. And basically what this does is it takes the class names of any route and it looks up the tree to see, you know, I'm on description list, look at application, look at root, what styles are in every, all of my ancestors versus what do I have? And then take just the unique ones to that route and export those as a style sheet. That's all that's going. So once this is done, if we're in production, we'll exit. Otherwise, we'll go into a watch mode and we'll just watch for any file changes. And if any file changes, 
will not rerun the whole thing because the whole thing takes about three or four seconds on the demo that I have. It would be even more for larger things. I mean, again, we're, we're running Tailwind on every single file and creating STs of everything. So it could be a little slow. So to optimize it in the dev environment, all that I do is I just watch for any file changes. And if a specific route changes, then I just change out the AST for that because building one AST is a lot faster. For me, it's about 500 to 700 milliseconds. It's much faster. And then I can rerun the generation of all the style sheets, which is really quick. The, the slow part is running Tailwind and generating the ASTs. So that's the basic idea uh, of what's going on here before we actually look at what it looks like in practice. Going back to our demo, I'm going to restart the dev server, npm run dev, and I'll move my face so we can actually see the logs. I'm on the main branch now, I wasn't before, and that's just so that I can apply the logic that we just talked about. We'll see this extra line that says, initial CSS generated in 3,829 milliseconds and watching for updates. And if we open the left-hand side, we can see that it kind of looks a little bit different. The styles actually haven't been added. We don't have the Zinc 100 outline that I kept messing with. And this right-hand side is abysmal. does not look good at all. But what's happening here? happening here? What is this initial CSS and the watching for updates? Well, if we close that, open up the sidebar, and go into styles, we can see there's this new routes, or sorry, routes directory, and there's an application, e-commerce, marketing, and inside of there, there's description list, drop down, login and registration, pagination. These all map to the various different uh, routes that we have. So we've created a CSS file for every single route. I'll go ahead and close this up. We're not going to need it anymore. And let's just fix this. So we're going to export let links, and it will be a links function like we did before. This needs to be a type. That's why I'm getting the squiggly underneath. And as the name implies, it's a function of arrays of rel equals style sheet. And then href, of course, we need to pull that out. So we'll import, and we're going to call it application CSS from styles slash routes slash application dot CSS, of course. So let's apply it and see what happens. Great, on the left-hand side, we have that light teal. Let's make it a little bit more pronounced just so it's clear that it is changing and updating. Awesome. And if we open up the console and we go to network, go to CSS, let's give this a refresh. You can actually see inner.css root, which is 4.4 kilobytes, so that's actually a lot smaller. We are having an, a smaller initial ro uh, load. And then the application.css is only 452 bytes. And we can even see the response. It's rounded LG, which is right here, and then BG Zinc 100 just for uh, the sake of showing it off. One more time, if we change it to 500, we can see that it did in fact update and automatically on the left-hand side, these are swapped out, which is really nice. So we don't actually have to refresh anything. So that's really cool. Let's, let's finish this up with description list. I'm gonna do copy and paste here, just to make things a little bit easier on ourselves. That links function can come from this side. And this isn't called application CSS anymore, it's called description lists. I mean, we could call it whatever we want, of course. What really matters is that we get it from description lists.css. Great. So those styles look a lot better, and we can see that description lists with the fingerprint of 6E, whatever, got loaded in. So that's really great. Only 984 kilobytes. And I went ahead and implemented every single other page. So if we just go through everything, we'll see it all load in. And everything is about uh, a kilobyte, maybe a little bit more. Hero sections is 1.7. Some are definitely a lot lower in the 400, 300 byte range, but basically we've managed to create style sheets of the tailwind that is needed just for that specific page for every single page so that we can incrementally load things a lot slower, which is really cool in and of itself, but that's not it actually. So for this application marketing and e-commerce for these ones, we use this same sidebar component in every single one. Uh, and the reason we do that is, well, because it looks the same for one, but also because we add all these little links to the side and so one nice thing that we can do is with links, we can add a field called, or rather a prop called prefetch, and we can give it uh, the intent value. So what intent means is basically what Remix will do is they'll take that and say, okay, if you hover over this link or tap to it, focus it on it in some way, we're going to go ahead and prefetch the CSS that you'll need it. So what does that look like? Well, I'm going to save this and then make this a little bit larger just so we can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to need to switch to all, not just CSS, to see this. Let's go ahead and empty the cache and do a hard reload. I'll clear out all that. And if I hover over pagination, you can see that the pagination JSS is prefetched, but also 
pagination.css, this text CSS file is preloaded. So when I actually go to pagination, it will load the CSS and it will already be loaded. To really show this off, let me disable the cache and let me <clears throat> actually switch to the production build. All right, looks like everything is running and working. We'll close that, make this as big as we can and really just refresh everything and clear everything. Clear this <clears throat> and we can see as we hover over login and registration and then click it, we can see that it already has a prefetch cache and a disk cache. Well, that's sorry for the Fabcon, but a prefetch cache for the CSS. Let's throttle to slow 3G and let's hover over dropdowns while it's loading it, you can see it's pending there and pending the CSS. When I click it, it's instantaneous. If I click description list really fast, there's a delay. We don't see everything load because it actually does have to load it. We could add a nice you know, UI for that. But if we do switch to something that we've already loaded, it's instantaneous. And if we go to marketing, the first page might be a little bit slow again, but it's definitely faster than you know if we were loading a bunch of CSS. And once we're actually on it, I think this is going to heroes icon, which is very slow. So let me clear all this out. <clears throat> or sorry, hero sections. If I hover over banners again, it'll prefetch it, or maybe I want to go to feature sections or header, I'm not sure, but okay, I decided I want to go to banners. Now I go to feature sections, now I go to headers. They're all already preloaded, which is really cool. And your initial byte, uh, time to first byte was incredibly, incredibly slow. Again, I'll refresh. This is the production build. So we can see enter, uh, root, marketing, headers, everything loaded all together. And this 4.4 is smaller than the um, than the original style sheet we had for all the Tailwind classes. So this is just a really cool idea and a cool way to split out your Tailwind CSS styles across all the different routes that you want. And it's only made possible by the way that Remix works with its conventions of nested routes and being able to load in and load off CSS at a route level. And Tailwind's ability to create these atomic classes and to purge them. Uh, in a really cool way. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you check out the repo in the description and look into it yourself and leave uh, a PR if you find anything that you think could be done a little bit better. Thank you.